What's up, guys and gals? I want to start with the story of the Cardiff Giant real quick. Back in the 1860s, the story goes that this guy got into an argument with a preacher about there being giants in the earth in those days. And what they don't tell you now is they were finding so many Indian burial mounds that Lincoln even said the eyes of that species of extinct giant whose bones fill the mounds of America during his inaugural address. But this was just a hoax. The guy was dedicated about it. He bought a 3,000 pound solid chunk of gypsum and said that it was for a statue of Abraham Lincoln. And he hoaxed everybody and then turned it into this. You can see that they took it very seriously. They think they're actually looking at a petrified giant from the Bible. But then he turns it into a circus sideshow and goes out and probably made a fortune off of it. Moral of the story is this. If that's what you're looking to hear and looking to find, then there's always going to be somebody that will provide that answer for you, <laughs> especially if there's money involved, like on YouTube. And then other believers get involved and repeat the same incorrect information, and it just spirals into something that is not anywhere close to reality. The blind leading the blind, if you will. And it's really unfortunate because there's absolute truth about this subject. There has been a catastrophe and a reset, but seriously, good luck finding good, accurate information on it because it's literally turned into just anything goes conspiracy theory. All history's fake after all. So after a couple years of studying, it all makes sense to me now. So I'm just going to lay it out how it is. And I'm going to explain the Tatarian buildings and everything. Here it is. <laughs> About 700 years ago, the official dating on this is the 1300s, everything just shifted. So let's start from the beginning. Those storm clouds in the background there aren't just hyperbole. There was all kinds of strange atmospheric occurrences that we'll get into. You can call this a mud flood season. You can call it grand solar minimum. But we go through these periods of anywhere from 60 to 150 years where solar activity diminishes less sunspots. This in turn screws with the magnetism. We get all kinds of earthquakes, volcanoes. After all, we do live in the electric universe, which I'll have to read you guys a paper from 1833 of a guy explaining the electric universe and how what he figures is at the center of the earth is some type of electrical dynamo. Anyway, in the three to 400 years prior to the 1300s, they call this the medieval warm period. They've, they've got all kinds of ways of testing this that I do believe. It's the pollen samples taken of fields. They can tell that agriculture had spread out further from the cities, population growth, all these things. This is just like the era that we have been living in to where we can grow up in northern latitudes and everything. When it changes, that won't be possible. And I got to say, it's been 50 to 70 degrees here all the way up until the start of next year when it should be 20 to 30. So I think the shifts are occurring for this go around. And then it just started raining and I'm talking nonstop incessant rain. It stripped fields of their topsoil. This flooded many cities. This is where you get a lot of the older mud flood evidence, but it ruined harvest for five years. And so that whole generation that did survive grew up malnourished and kind of sickly just in time for the Black Death and everything. But this was just the beginning of the calamities. Now, I don't know if the dates are off here or if this weather pattern hit England and then moved over to China, but it was supposed to be England and Europe in 1315. And it says this about 1333, this series of great events first appeared in China. Here, a parching drought accompanied by famine commenced in the tract country watered by the rivers Kaiang and Hua. This was followed by such violent torrents of rain in and about King Sai that, according to tradition, more than 400,000 people perished in the floods. Finally, the mountain Chin Su fell in and vast clefts were formed in the earth. In the succeeding year, the neighborhood of Canton was visited by inundation whilst in Qi, after an unexampled drought, a plague arose, which is said to have carried off about 5 million people. Now, this is on the Yangtze River, which is was then and is still today a majorly populated area, and nonstop rain, incessant flooding, and then it says, 
A few months afterwards, an earthquake followed at and near King Sai, and the subsequent to the falling in of the mountains, Kiming Chain, a lake was formed of more than 300 leagues in circumference, where, where again, thousands found their grave. I couldn't find anything on the Kiming Mountains, but a lake 100 leagues in circumference is about 20 miles across, so you're talking one of these smaller lakes up in the Tibetan Plateau is what I'm guessing. I didn't see any lakes that large down in the main part of China. But he did say a mountain, so somewhere up in the mountains, and it fell in, blocked off a river, formed a whole new big lake. That was all in the first three years of this, and then in 1336, many uncommon atmospheric phenomena. This is ubiquitous all around the world in all mythologies of different ages even, but in the 1300s, the Inca talked about the bearded apparition in the sky, even the word comet is Latin for hairy one, hairy one or something like that. And then in 1337, another 4 million people perished by famine. Uh, deluges, swarms of locusts, and an earthquake which lasted six days caused incredible destruction. For England, most of Europe, China, there you've got nonstop torrential rains and famines and the makings of the very real reset that has happened, not just wild conspiracy theories here. Now let's jump over to the island of Cyprus here in the beautiful Mediterranean, beautiful as long as the sea's sitting still. On the island of Cyprus, the plague from the east had already broken out when an earthquake shook the foundations of the island and was accompanied by so frightful a hurricane that the inhabitants who had slain, slain their slaves in order that they might not themselves be subjugated, fled in dismay in all directions. The sea overflowed, so a tsunami, the ships were dashed to pieces on the rocks, and few outlived the terrific event whereby this fertile and blooming island was converted into a desert. Before the earthquake, a pestiferous wind spread so poisonous an odor that many being overpowered by it fell down suddenly and expired in dreadful agonies. Now, they just said plain as day that the sea overflowed the island. The ships were dashed to pieces. Few outlived the terrific event. And this fertile island was converted into this modern-day desert island that we have. And here are the ruins that are left from the city being destroyed. This was how they were living in the 1300s. This is what everybody's looking at for Tataria and all this. These cities were emptied out by these events. In some places, they say that 15 out of 16 did not survive. That's after the Black Death, which happened at the basically end of all of these catastrophes. So let me just break down official history for you. 536 AD, the worst year to be alive. There were earthquakes and famine and everything I just read to you. And then there was Justinian's plague, and it killed... Official numbers, somewhere between 30 and 50 million people. And then the world went into the Dark Ages for 800 years. Nobody kept any records of anything that happened in that 800 years, basically. And there was no innovation. And then there was the Black Death, and all of the same things happened that I just read. All the flooding, famine, earthquakes, volcanoes. There was volcanic winters involved in all of this. And then once again, 25 to 50 million people taken out. Now, let's take a look at this painting of people in the 1300s during the Black Death. Does that look like a medieval city back there, or does that look like what we would call a classic Roman city? The ancient style city. And now let's look at this painting found on a wall down in the ashes of Pompeii that was destroyed by Vesuvius supposedly in, what was that, 79 AD? in one of the very few ancient Roman paintings that still survive because this was preserved down in ash, you find perspective painting there. Well, it just so happens that perspective painting disappeared for 800 years through the Dark Ages and then all of a sudden reappeared in the 13th century once again down at the bottom there. So let me simplify all of history for you. You had the ancients, the time of Christ, 0 AD till about 500 AD 
with all the catastrophes associated with that time period. This is actually running concurrent with that's the same time frame as the medieval warm period that they know that all of the fields were grown out, the cities were built out. It was a big flourishing society. And then to make up for their technology gap from the ancient Romans through the dark ages, they say there was the 12th century Renaissance. It was just the same technology of the first 500 years AD. So you're talking good sailing ships, windmills, uh, clock making, gunpowder, and then the catastrophe hit and set the world back 500 years. The 12, uh, you know, the 1200s right before the catastrophes hit would have basically been like our 1700s. They were probably right on the verge of the industrial revolution at this time. They were building the Santa Maria del Four at this time. And I will guarantee you that the people that started building that structure knew how to put a dome on top of it when they began, but the catastrophe stuck, struck and it sat there without a roof on it for 80 years until Filippo Brunelleschi came along and finally figured out a way to put a roof on the top of it. The earthquake of 1349 destroyed the Roman Colosseum. So, the Colosseum was just sitting there for 800 years since the time of the Romans and then was finally destroyed by an earthquake in 1349. No, the time from Jesus to Justinian was about 300 years and it was the 300 years prior to the catastrophes of the 1300s. This was the time of the ancients. Catastrophe struck. And you had ancient family lines go extinct. Millions and millions of people died. There are all kinds of graphic stories that I'm not going to go into right now. And then you have people swooping in to gain power after the catastrophes, the Hundred Years' Wars. And this is why I say it may have happened earlier. This could have all went down in 1480 to 1490 for all I know, but I know that it did go down. At least when people were well populated enough to go to war with each other then the german hasburgs and the italians were at war and then in spain you had the expulsion of the sephardi in 1492 supposedly the same time that columbus set sail and also the spanish inquisition a complete lockdown on knowledge and the history has happened through the power of the catholic church and Things like the Jez, you can't say it's the Society of Jesus. And I think the whole reason for the Spanish Inquisition is when the seas got calm enough to send a recon team over, Spain sent Columbus over to America, and they found out that everybody in America is wiped out even worse than them. They had old world stories such as El Dorado, the city of gold. They knew about all of these riches in America and that 80 to 90 percent of the population was wiped out and it was there for the taking. I'll get back to the maps on a future video, but I think the old maps were from the old world showing California as an island before the catastrophes. Then all of this gave way to the age of exploration, the rediscovery of the world. They knew exactly where to look in places like Angkor Wat and all of these places. They they know where to find this city. Check this out. A hundred feet down at the bottom of this pit, two miles away from where the river is today, it used to be on the river, but it's flooded out and changed course, is this city buried a hundred feet deep. This is almost as large as Rome. That amphitheater holds 12,000 people, and they've got a hippodrome, and it's a huge city of like 40,000 people a hundred feet underground. So what I'm proposing here is a very sound logical explanation of why you find all of this all around the world. But this is seriously from a video that pretty sum, pretty much sums up all the mud flood videos. They take and they show these pictures. I'm literally just going frame by frame of what they did. All these buildings around the world. And then let's jump to Boston, Massachusetts in the 1800s. And then let's just pick any photograph that you can find at all that has basement windows. And well, it's mud flood windows. This building's been through a mud flood. There's zero structural damage to that. If there was any liquefaction of 
sidence, it would not have sunk evenly and it would be way out of level. Trust me, I'm a contractor, I know these things. It's very common and makes a lot of sense to have basement windows. We build them all the time still, but especially before the invention of electricity, you let light in and also to keep it from turning into a moldy mess, any big building like commercial building, apartment building, even the motel down the street from my house still has one of these in the basement. If you don't know what this is, it's a boiler room. This is how all the buildings were heated for 150 years. You had a boiler room in the basement and then you had these little radiators up in the rooms that the water would percolate through and keep everything warm. It's just simple, out of date technology. But none of this has anything to do with any type of catastrophe. It's just looking at old photos and saying all oh, history is fake. So if that's your thing, fine. What I'm talking about is the real history of the world. 700 years ago, there was a major catastrophe that left whole quarters of cities empty. This was originally swept under the rug by the Catholic Church and is still swept under the rug by the mainstream because mainstream, they don't want you to know anything about this. They want you to think that everything is man-made. And they want us to think that we are the height of human civilization and we're not. So anyway, this is the real story of the resets. Uh, if you want to hear more of the truth, keep coming back. If you want to hear this, there's plenty of it out here. So let's just end with this. It is 1834. The sky suddenly turns dark and snow starts to fall. The Tatarians are scared. They've never experienced snow before and wonder what's happening. The sand begins to lift up from the ground and rain falls down like a flood and mixes with the sand. A wave of mud covers the entire earth, leaving more than half of all life forms dead. In the meantime, a race of beings have taken over what's left of the great empire of Tataria. Like I said, guys, if you guys want to believe that a chunk of gypsum is a petrified ancient giant, then go right ahead. I'm trying to get the truth out on this subject, not bullshit everybody. Peace out.